welcome back to Summer Money on the Sky News Business Channel. The true value of good reputation management in business is never more evident than during a crisis when the proverbial hits the fan. How many businesses are ready with crisis communication plans when the factory catches fire, there's a web scandal or a product recall? Joining us shortly is John Bissett from the Public Relations Institute of Australia. But first on the panel, Kelly Connolly is a former current affairs reporter and senior presenter with the Nine Network, who has set up her own consultancy offering advice on how to handle the trickiest media moments. Also on the panel, Marie Najar, who is the founder of Public City, an agency that focuses on campaign management in social media and crisis communication plans and they have joined us in the studio right now thanks so much for being on the panel You're welcome. today um, crisis communications it's probably not a concept many small businesses understand but it's an important concept isn't it Kelly I'll start with you if the media comes knocking when something's gone wrong people need to have an understanding of what that relationship from business and media will be like because it's tricky sometimes isn't it it sure is and if the media comes knocking at your door it's often the scariest thing that can happen in your life I mean for starters your heart's already racing because you know there's something out of your control in your business a crisis so how do you deal with that well you're trying to figure out how to do that internally and then you're dealing with the media and that exposes you on a much larger level mm. so um, coming to grips with what you not only do within your organization but then how you explain that to the public is a biggie Marie, uh, many businesses would struggle to understand the concept of a crisis plan and being ready for mm -hmm. when something terrible hits, mm -hmm. that it's about, correct me if I'm wrong, preparing before things go wrong. Absolutely. Look, I think every business that... Um uh, every business really needs to plan and consider what kind of a crisis can occur in my industry or in my business. So for example in a factory it could be a fire, it could be a toxic leak, it could be mm. something of that, um, that scale and from there think okay well if this happens what am I going to do to manage it? Mm. So that if the media do come knocking they're already um, activating a plan so that they can get back into control. Mm. How um, does a business define a crisis? Um, if something goes wrong, businesses would be um, tempted to put their head in the sand. Mm. That's bad advice, isn't it, Kelly? Exactly. I think that's often the worst mistake people make is to retreat and when the media come, let's not answer their mm. calls, let's mm. figure everything out. And uh, the thing you need to do is, is be very quick with the media in your response and very truthful in your response. Now, if you don't really know what's going to say, hi guys, at the moment, things are a little out of control. We have our experts analysing the situation and I'll give you an update in an hour. Mm. Or, or you give them some sort of time frame uh, on which you're happy to get back to them as long as you're mm. communicating with them. Marie, how does a business define a crisis? Well, it's immediate. It's happening now. Mm. Um, it it can probably or has stopped your business from operating. Mm -hmm. It's affected the environment or your reputation to the point where it um, could really affect your business's survival in the long term. So mm. it's, it's got to be pretty large scale for it to be considered a crisis. Mm. We're going to talk about some hints and tips over the next half hour or so, which will be great for small business. But I thought I'd um, build some uh, case studies. Kate Williams, our reporter, has put together some case studies of big business and how they handled crisis. And one of them, of course, was the Qantas A380 uh, near disaster from Singapore over Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Here's a quick report on that case study. Qantas prides itself on being the only international airline not to have experienced a mid-air disaster, although it came very close in November last year when a blast tore through an engine on an A380. The plane, with more than 450 people on board, was bound for Sydney out Singapore when the engine exploded. Debris fell on an island in Indonesia, prompting initial reports in social media that the plane had crashed. When the plane landed safely back in Singapore, Singapore, Qantas employed everything it knows about crisis communication. Key spokespeople were available at Sydney Airport to answer media questions about what had happened and why. Descriptions of the event by passengers didn't help. One described the blast as being like the moment the iceberg hit the Titanic. Qantas was up front by acknowledging it still didn't know what caused the blast and it took another dramatic step by announcing the fleet of A380s would not return to the air until the company was confident the safety of passengers could be assured. 
Qantas made sure CEO Alan Joyce was briefed about aspects of the incident. He made himself available at several media conferences. Qantas management insists safety will always come first. Kate Williams, Sky News Business. Kelly, Qantas made sure their senior management were available to answer media questions from really early on in this crisis. Is that good advice to small business? If something goes wrong, have someone who actually knows what's going on to talk to the media. Absolutely, yeah. and that was critical, and that's why I think this is a textbook case in how to do it right. Do it right. Yes. I mean, it, here was a, a potentially um, seriously damaging crisis mm. for the company. Somehow, Alan Joyce, who was there available for the interview uh, for the media at every opportunity and answering mm. every question, turned this into a poor Qantas kind of situation. Mm. He, he started not only addressing all the pertinent issues, but then deflecting, talking about the, the issues with the engines and Rolls-Royce. Um, there was a sense of calm. Uh, he immediately grounded the fleets. And that Steps was a big like deal. That. He did that quite quickly, mm -hmm. didn't he? And Marie, what, do you, what was your thoughts on Qantas saying, right, these planes aren't going back up in the air, quite aware that that was going to cost a lot of money? Absolutely, but it was the right thing to do mm. considering that Alan Joyce was um, later on talking about at his media conference and in media releases they were handing out that the planes won't fly until they're 100% comfortable mm. that they're safe. Now Qantas's brand is all about, you know, we're the safest airline, mm. we're an airline that you can trust. And so in, in doing what they did by grounding them, it's sending a message out to the public that we actually mean what we say and we're going to do that through action. Mm. Which I think in the absence mm. of that would have made a lot of what he said to the media um, less credible. Mm. Yeah. It's important about controlling the story? Absolutely. And, and contrast that to a, to a similar um, public furor uh, at the time with the Commonwealth Bank who had decided to hike interest rates against Reserve Bank yeah. sort of yeah. recommendations. Now, their CEO was out of the country. Now, he didn't, he, he underestimated mm. the impact of the decision they were making. I don't think he, he ever imagined the backlash. Mm. But he was out of the country. He was absent when his troops needed him because let's, <laughs> let's not just think about the public reputation issue. The poor Commonwealth bank staff were being heckled and abused so it's about being accountable and and if if it's been a mistake or if there's been a problem at least sort of showing your face and saying mm. okay we're getting control of this situation and we're investigating it you raised the case study with the banks at the senate uh, economics inquiry into banking competition the banking ceos have all agreed that they're not telling the story about interest rate hikes well enough. Mm. Um, Marie, surely there would be a communication plan and I'm guessing Qantas had a plan ready and raring to go in the event of a crisis. Absolutely. Qantas, for sure, as far as I'm concerned, did have that because it was able to be activated very quickly. Mm. Their spokesperson was obviously trained. In fact, I know that um, the case study you showed then mentioned, you know, one passenger saying, oh my God, it sounded like, you know, we hit Titanic. Like the, like the Titanic hitting an iceberg. That's <laughs> right, yeah. But other passengers that came off the plane actually were saying that, you know what, the crew handled it really well and the passengers were relatively calm which helped the crew do their job properly so talk about crisis management the first step in crisis management actually happened on that plane and in crisis communication mm. in order for those passengers to have been so calm mm. Kelly what's your advice for small business in the event of a crisis getting really tough questions from the media and here's one what if the business mm. knows they've done the wrong thing mm. you know what you just have to say we did the wrong mm. thing that is the best thing you can say never ever lie never mm. try to dig a hole and, and and bury the truth somewhere you say look we we take full responsibility how many times have you heard that from yeah, really yeah, rehearsed yeah. mouths we take full responsibility for what we've done but here's what we're doing about it. Always follow up any admission or any apology. I mean, if a banking, for instance, um, you know, ATMs go down or something like that, they always say, we apologise to customers for the delay and the inconvenience, mm. but here's mm. what we're doing about it. We're fixing the problem. And, and the same applies to small business. You just always be accountable, but then say what you're doing about it because you, you're going to have to deal with the truth at some <laughs> point. You might as well deal with it now before it blows out of proportion. Yeah. It's big picture stuff, isn't it, for a small business if something goes wrong, not only the crisis communication, Marie, but knowing what it was that led up to the crisis in the first place and making sure it doesn't happen again? That's right, and you have to do that all within the space of an hour. <laughs> if it's a crisis, the media are knocking down your door. Yeah. Um, but in the case of small businesses, it's really important to note that not all small businesses have a communications professional working for them internally. So often you'll have a small business that's run by the founder. Mm. It may have three staff. It may have 50 and turn over $30 million. But 
they may still not have that function. So that's a very difficult position to be mm. in because you're used to being in the day-to-day -day grind of the job. Mm. So my advice to small businesses in a situation like that would be before you're even in a crisis, if you want to protect your business, I would go out and seek help from an agency or an independent consultant to help you plan for any poten potential scenario. That's first and foremost. Second of all, I think media training when it mm. comes to talking to the media is essential. I mean, you may have a really good message to deliver and then choke up in front of a, you know, a media pack of 20 with microphones and cameras in your face, which if you don't um, behave in a certain way, then the audience will make assumptions as mm. to whether or not you know, you have something to yeah, hide. Something to hide. You've seen it, I'm sure, from the other side of the desk, go terribly <laughs> well, wrong for, for, for businesses trying to handle a crisis. Well, I used to work at a current affair, so there you go, there's a crisis every show on a current <laughs> affair. And often what happens is that the people are um, uh, not prepared mm. for, for what to do when the media comes knocking. So what will happen a lot of the time, if, if you don't answer media calls, some media will chase you. Mm. They will get you hopping out of your car. They will get you walking into your home. Now, this is worst case scenario, yeah. and it does sound particularly scary. Scary. But um, you can avoid that by communicating with people to begin with. We are going to go to a quick break. John Bissett from the Public Relations Institute of Australia will be joining us on the panel when we return in a moment on Summer Money.